Number six is the first par five and it's certainly reachable in two. Decisions to be made off the tee, do you go with the driver? Would you play an iron and see if you can get there with two long irons? Five bunkers down the left, 270 to reach the first one. Certainly if you hit it down there, you're almost certain to find one. Down the right side, still water coves. Isn't that a beautiful scene? But you don't want to go down there because you're never going to see your ball again. But one of the real problems on this hole, as you walk down here, you've got to pick your line as you're walking off the tee to look up here to see where the flag is in relation to the TV tower. Because once you get in this driving area, you can't see nothing. The players are scratching their heads because they don't know exactly where the flag is. So very important here to pick the line as you're walking off the tee. Well, from here you see virtually nothing. Up the bank it goes. You know you've got to be a little bit left of the flag to let it run round. But have a look from here. Up in the sky gives you a much better perspective. What a spot this is, and anyone would take an advantage to get a good scene from here. And this seagull's doing just that. Magnificent. I'm on the seventh tee. At Pebble Beach, this is one of the most famous holes. It's a very short par three downhill. And let's have a quick look at the green. Surrounded by bunkers, and the green's not much bigger than a postage stamp. So if you miss it and pitch one of the traps, the ball may plug. And if you look down there, right down at the bottom there, there's a white square on the green. Let's go and have a look at that and see why I've put it there. On a day like today, finding this seventh green's not too tricky. It's only going to be a sort of three-quarter wedge, but with a bit of breeze about, turning and swirling, club selection a little tricky because it's such a small putting surface and I've put this towel right in the centre of the green. Now if you hit it here every day the longest putt you're going to have is to that cup there which is no more than 18 feet and most of them you're only one, two, three yards away. But if you start chasing flags, see this one you'd only have a two yard putt, one, two, but you start chasing the flags, a bit of breeze about and you push it or pull it, you find one of these tiny weeny bunkers like this. The ball might plug. So chasing the flags here has its problems. If you can play at the center of the green there and find that towel, you're in the perfect spot. But when you stand on that tee with a little three-quarter wedge, you can't help chasing the flag. It's irresistible. The par 4 8, 428 yards, strategically a very, very interesting hole. First of all, the fairway's unsighted to you. You have to pick your line on the distant villas. And then you've got to choose what you're going to hit off the tee. So let's have a, just have a quick look at it. This is the tee down here, the fairway, and the green over here and you run out, you can only go a maximum of 260 yards there. So ideally you want to hit it in here, about 240 yards and no further. Otherwise you run through the fairway. And when I say run through the fairway, come and have a look what I mean. This is spooky. If you run through the fairway here, you don't go and look for your ball. So you can't hit it down there. But what a spectacular second shot. Jack Nicklaus said this is one of the best second shots in golf and you can see why. There's a bit of breeze about just the tiniest, tiniest stamp of a green little down change in elevation. This is a fantastic hole. You've got to be so careful. Lots of things to take into account. And a four here every day, ace. Beautiful down here. The beach at Pebble Beach that runs alongside the 8th, 9th and 10th. It's lovely, beautiful sunny day. And here's the ice plant. This is a, a famous thing around here. It looks, looks absolutely beautiful, unless you find your ball in it. And then it's totally unplayable. Lovely wild flowers the roaring of the ocean, people enjoying the sunny day, a little hollow here full of other spectacular wildflowers and a few butterflies floating by. It is really something special. You can smell the fresh air, but it's a big problem if you're playing the ninth hole. There is Tiger on the ninth green. If you leak three yards right of the putting surface, you're into the penalty area here, although it looks absolutely magnificent. If you're trying to find your ball, it is awful. I'm on the ninth green and to the right of the ninth green is one of the biggest penalty areas in the world of golf, the Pacific Ocean. Small putting surface, you don't want to go over there. But have a look at this. On the front left of this green, you can't see it yet, can you? Have a look at this. A chasm of a pot bunker sits there. From the green, you can't see it. From When you're playing your second shot from down the fairway, it stares at you, this big blob of sand. You don't want to go right, and you really don't want to go short and left. The pin is often tucked beyond it. And have a look, just have a look at the height of the lip. Amazing, sometimes on TV it just doesn't give you any sort of perspective. I'll go in this bunker. And the lip must be three feet above me, four feet above me. So this, this bunker's well, practically eight or nine feet deep. So down here you can see absolutely nothing. Till you come back here, you might just get a little glimpse of the flag. This is a brilliant, brilliant hole the ninth. Tricky small green, Pacific one side, and this baby on the left, ooh, it's a toughie. The 10th is the longest par four and the tee's way, way back in the distance there. 
but the fairway at number 10 has got a huge, really quite violent slope from left to right. Let's just see how that ball runs across. Tiger Woods says this is one of the very few holes on the course. Ideally, you want to hit a driver with a bit of draw on it. A lot of players hit three woods. My goodness, it is steep, isn't it? It's going to get away from it. Watch out, boys. Coming through. Second shot, ball below your feet. It just keeps trickling, trickling, trickling. Is it going to make it? Not quite. The seagulls quite enjoy it. It may do. It just gives you an idea how steep the fairway sloped. Big slope from left to right. That ball's run about 60 yards. Didn't quite make it into the hazard. What a tee shot this is. You've got to be so careful, particularly a left to right wind. Otherwise, you find your ball on the beach. You've got to love the 14th here, the par five. It really is a classic. The green is unique, a very small putting surface if you're going for it in two, very tricky. The front left, really the front of the green is guided by this huge trap. And the area you can cut a hole, a hole location, is in this area of orange circles. Virtually half of the green you can't get a flag in. And here it is, it's about 15 yards by eight yards deep. Very small indeed. Over the back, you go down the little hollow. If you come up short, you obviously don't want to come short left, the ball might plug in that bunker. And if you come here on the right side, the ball just pop them down here. Let's see what happens. Little bluff. A secret little bluff at the front of the green. And the ball's just come trickling, trickling down here. Here they come. You thought you played a perfect shot, got a little bit too much backspin on it. Perhaps the flight was a little bit too high and they all come trickling to the front of the green here. And it leaves you a very awkward spot. This magnificent green, full of intrigue. Look at the little chip you leave yourself. Really tricky. What a green, what a hole. Absolutely superb. The 18th at Pebble Beach is something special. It really is. The tee sits out into the ocean. You can hear the waves crashing around you. You've got a decision to make. Can you reach the green in two? Do I have a go for it? Are you going to hit a bit of a draw and work it towards the water? Or are you going to sort of fade it over the tree? But the tree, which is on the right side of the fairway here, is the pivotal point. Can I get past it? Do I play left of it? The tree is about 265 odd yards off the tee and the fairway to the left of it is only about 20 yards wide. Let's just measure it out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, seven, twelve, thirteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. Twenty-three yards wide, left of the tree. But if you miss on the left when you're trying to hit this big tee shot with a draw, you're in the sea or in the rocks. Occasionally someone bounces out, but you can't go down there. There's big decisions to be made off this tee. If the breeze is helping, you can certainly reach for two. Breeze against, the tree's in your way. So what are you going to do? You think, am I going to be brave and have a go for it? It's one of those tee shots. Actually, now that it's in range for two for more players, it does goad you to have a go and brings this ocean into play. Brilliant, brilliant hole. It's just fantastic. It sits there in front of you. Can I make a four? If I don't, I could be in all sorts of trouble. It is fantastic. Small greens here, but quite big slopes, and it's key on every one of your iron shots to try and place the ball under the cup so you're putting up the hill. Let's have a look at this green here. Let's try this putt here. The slope on this green is from back to front. You just watch how they break. I'm going to knock this one up. Look at that. Big carving break. And then from beyond the cup, you can see this is a little down the slope, but it's a bit quicker than you think. Watch this one ran out. You think it's not going to keep going, but she does. She just keeps trickling, 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 trickling. This one downhill from right to left, really, really awkward. It's going to dive to the left. Just a little nudge and she's gone. Look at it, gone. The only putt you can leave yourself to give yourself a real genuine chance is to find the uphill putt. They'll have that on their yardage books. Which is the best angle to putt from? Let's try this one. Up the slope. This is the slow one. Easy to leave it short. Up the hill she goes. From there, you've got half a chance. If you can get the ball in the right spot on these greens, you've got a chance. Get it wrong, you've got some awfully tricky putts. Fast ones, side hillers. They're beautiful greens, but they're tricky. I just love bunkers and there's some absolute beauties here. There really are. 118 on this golf course and just have a look at some of them. All different shapes and sizes. Some are wider, some are little gullies. Look at this one. It's like a little trough. At the back of it's the long rough and it's an absolute doozy. Get in there, you never know what sort of stance, what sort of lie you're going to get. You're praying as you come up here it's not plugged. And this is one of my favourites. Look at this little gully one here. Let's tiptoe through it, no one will notice. This little avenue here. You're never going to get a flat by three. A little hollow here, playing down the slope. Such a lot of variety. This is an absolute honey of a bunker. Don't go in there though, it's good to look at, but impossible to play out of. A larger one here, like a big jigsaw piece. 
little tongue sticking into it. But look at this for a bit of character. Looks like someone's boot. Little tongue runs in here. You just never know. The ball can go in. You're never quite sure where they're going to finish. But these bunkers at this golf course, well, they are magic. Magic to look at, they look right, they play right. But really, you want to avoid them. Because whenever you're in them, Pebble Beach isn't the longest course in the world and it's quite narrow, so there'll be a number of holes where you'd like to take an iron off the tee. Well, you bomb one down the fair when it runs and runs and runs and gets you into the perfect spot. But look what happens if you push it in the rough. You've taken an iron for safety and the ball just nestles in right at the bottom of the grass. No run out, so suddenly you're 30 yards behind where you ought to have been. And look how the ball's lying. It just settles down this stuff. It really is dense, dense, dense rough. Let's just chop a bit off and see what it looks like. Not quite at the bottom. Out they come. There it is, three inches long, three and a half inches, four inches long, but plenty of it. And it's been watered, so it's quite dense, rich, and vengefully thick, I'd have to say. So if you take an iron off the tee and you find the rough, you're in all sorts of trouble. This rough this week is nasty. Keep out of it. I'm on the 17th green. It's fairly typical of all the greens on the golf course, fairly small, and the rough around it, quite dense. There's sort of foot of very short rough, then this stubbly stuff, which the ball can sit down on, then into the slightly thicker stuff. Let's just have a look at the typical sort of lies you're going to find if you miss the green. So they just nestle down and about four inches long, settle down tricky. And this one's in, well, in spinach. And you've got to practice them. There's always a little bit element of luck when how they come out. Open the club face. And just up there is where Tom Watson played his famous shot from. Open the club face and block it forward and hope. That's not too bad. You're never quite sure how they're going to react. See how it slipped underneath that one. And this stuff, I mean, this is hit and hope. Grass line against you. Oops, she's gone a country mile. So miss the green, you're only, you know, three foot, four foot off the edge of the green, you're in some real thick stuff. With the greens often sloping away from you, they're very, very tricky. It's so unpredictable how the ball's gonna come out. It's been a magic stroll around the golf course this afternoon, sun's starting to set, and as I've wandered around, I've noticed quite a number of the tee shots of this golf course are left to right shots, a fade. So I've put my bones down here. These are all the holes, one to 18, just to analyze what's what. Well, we can take the par threes out because you can probably put any type of shot you like to those. So which are the fades? One is a fade for certain, two is certainly a fade. Third is probably a little draw shot. Four's a fade, six is a fade, eight's a fade just to land it softly on the fairway. Ninth is probably a fade too to work it down the slope. Ten's not, 11 a fade. 13, the slopey fairway. 14, probably a fade as well. 15, 16, and 18. So there's only three holes. The third, the tenth, and the eighteenth that favor the right to left draw. The rest all favor the fade. So if you're a cutter of the ball, you can work from left to right with confidence. Your natural shot, it's gonna be invaluable this week to hit those little fades, land them on the fairway, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 holes of your tee shots favour that left to right shot, the bread and butter, the cutter. I was wandering around the course this morning and I started to think, do you ever get a flat lie on the golf course? And as we went round, I realised the 18th fairway is quite flat and there's a little bit on the 15th that is flat. The rest, you're always playing off a bit of a tilt. So here's a flat lie, ball a little bit below your feet, above your feet, down slope, up slope. There's always something there in every single fairway. Just let's take a look at this bit here. Here's a bit here. Ball's gonna be above your feet. And from there, you're gonna swing a little bit flat and the tendency is perhaps to overdraw it. So you've got to guard against that. Just not far away, a slope going the other way. Which one's this way? This is mainly a down slope, but again, the ball below your feet, so you're likely to cut it. So all the way around here, club selection, but how's the ball lying on the turf? Is it an upslope, down slope? You've got to counter that the whole time. It's one of the engaging things about Pebble Beach that you don't often see on the TV or you can miss it, but it's there every single hole. Is the ball above your feet, below your feet, down slope, up slope? Got to counter it. It really is a special feature. For the modern tour professional, a key thing is, of course, 14 clubs, but Annie's yardage book. And I've kept very nearly all my yardage books and all the different courses I've played. And they've changed so much over the years. It was really here when Jack Nicklaus played in the USM and he used the yardage card that it started to become popularized. And have a look at these few oldies. There's some beauties. In the early days, we had to do our own yardage book. This is from Royal Adams St. Anne's when I played my first Ryder Cup in 1977. You see, it was all hand done, marked out, and you paced it out. One, two, three, four, it took a long while. 
and of course you made some mistakes and, and they slowly moved on this was from the green bra similar sort of thing but it was your own work then suddenly some of the caddies started to do them for us bruce edwards there creamy carolyn used to caddy for arnold palmer and angelo used to caddy for jack nicholas they produced them and they used to buy them then made life a little easy for ourselves but look at the modern ones here's the 85 i played the last time at the Pe pebble beach in the crosby and they were quite good then, they did them quite nicely, but fairly simple, but had all the basic yardage, you put your own marks on it. But now, this is this week's one, 2019 US Open Pebble Beach Championship Yardage Book. Look at the detail, slopes on the greens, every single sprinkler's mark, all the runouts, all the different carries. It really is amazing. Look at that one, hey? You've got to be a mathematician to use that. So the modern yardage book's got everything, and the current player can hardly manage without them. You still need that touch and feel, but this yardage book is absolutely critical. You'll see them in those back pockets, slightly worn at the end of the week. They've been used a lot.